Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Uh, <clears throat> and Mantis Stan Yunus. I told you, it was coming. So he won the WBA Welterweight Championship. And this is the thing. He is now the mandatory, the WBA mandatory to Earl Spence. And this is a fight. He's in a very good position. This is the, this is the thing. Spence wants to make the Crawford fight. And that's the fight everybody wants to see. But see, now these sanctioning bodies are going to get involved. They're going to start pushing these mandatories, okay? So Spence has three belts. That means there's, there's, there's going to be mandatories for all three belts. Maybe the same person and for the WBA and the WBC. It could be a different. It could be same person for all three belts that he has. It could be a different person for each belt. This is a problem Spence is going to run into. If Stan Yunus wants to press for that fight to happen, and the sanctioning bodies don't want to work a deal where they allow Spence to have an, a volunteer defense, and then after that, go and fight Crawford. I mean, fight the, his mandatory. So they may say, we'll, give, we'll allow Spence six months to fight Stan Yunus, but in the interim, he can have a voluntary defense. That's where he gets to fight Crawford. But if they say that, he doesn't have to pay, pay a step aside fee. But if Stan Yunus pushes the issue, and that's not what some of these sanctioned bodies agree to, then now Earl Spence has to start looking to pay a step aside fees to these guys. And these guys aren't going to want 250000 you know. They're going to want some money. And because they look at what they can get paid to fight Spence, could be the highest paid of their career. It could be $2 million, $1 million. I mean, he does have a belt now. But Stan Yunus is looking to get, he's a step aside fee, he's looking to get paid very handsomely. And he earned himself this position. But that's the problem with what Spence is going to be in. He's going to need Al Heyman and his team and Showtime. He's going to need everyone to come together and figure out how to avoid paying all of these step aside fees so they can make that Crawford fight. Crawford fight is the big fight. That's the, that's the fight right, to be made. There's going to be so much money behind that fight where I think Spence can make upwards of $30 million. Crawford could probably get around 10 Crawford's lucky if he gets that because really he, he brings nothing to the table. He, 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 his fan base is a, a diehard boxing fans. He doesn't really attract to the casual fan. He can't fill up on anything, 10,000 people in a stadium. Earl Spence is putting 40,000 plus in the AT&T arena there in Dallas. So when you, you got to look at all of that. But for a man to stand units, man, as far as him and Earl Spence, you got to look at, like last night's a good example. It's a good measuring stick as far as what he brings to the table. Uh, he, does, he doesn't throw that many punches. Like last night when he was fighting against Boutier, Boutier threw 156 more punches than him. But Stan Yunus was landing at a 37% connect rate, and Boutier's connect rate was only 19%. That has a lot to do with Stan Yunus' high guard. But Stan Yunus almost quadrupled uh, Boutier in jabs, uh, 80 to 21. And then Stan Yunus is an extreme sharpshooter. He throws power, quick, sharp, powerful punches from the first round to the 12th round. And Stan Yunus landed 42% of his power shots. And he limited Boutier to only 29%. And see, and that speaks volumes about Stan Yunus. But we all know Earl Boutier is no Earl Spence. And if you look here at the image that I attached, look at Stan Yunus' face. Now, Butia was landing some shots. He was getting some shots through the guard. He obviously is a heavy hitter as well. But Stan Yunus, he did get hurt a couple of times in that fight. But he, as soon as he got hit, he let his hands go. And he did look like he was the one tired, becoming a bit tired. He looked more fatigued than Butia. Butia looked fresh even at the last couple of seconds of the 12th round. Problem we're gonna run into, uh, Monty's gonna run to with Earl Spence if they fight is Earl Spence work rate. Now the first couple of rounds is gonna be interesting because Earl Spence can get hit and he can get hurt, and Amantis has the power to hurt him. He has the boxing style to make it a little complicated. But the problem is this: Amantis doesn't. He's not a boxer. He doesn't move around. He stands there and he lets his hands go. He was a, a, an Olympian, too, for Lithuania. 
and that's huge. But he's he he's stationary, and that's just a, a mixture of sitting duck for Earl Spence. Unless he can let one of those shots go when Earl Spence comes on the inside, because sometimes Earl Spence likes to lead in with his head, see what you're gonna do, bait you in to let your hands go. But a Mantis has such sharp, crisp, accurate shots. The uppercut, the hook, the right hand, overhand right. He throws it from different angles. He bangs to the body good. But if he's gonna sit there and stand in front of Spence, who can box? Spence would just box him, break him down, and shut and stop the fight. And look at the way a man's face has swollen up. And he's and I, I'm rooting for him to go on and do great things. I just think he's gonna have his hands full with Earl Spence. Earl Spence stops him by the sixth round because he just can't get out of the way of those punches. Uh, your Dana Sugars is a guy who has the legs, who can move around the ring, and he couldn't get out of the way of the punches. But when a, when Yugas let his hands go, he hurt Spence. Okay, what nobody says. Every time he let his hands go, he connected and he hurt Spence. He just didn't do it enough, and that's because Earl Spence didn't let your Danis be great. Now, you understand what I'm saying? Your Danis is a great fighter, but on that night, Earl Spence didn't let him be great. And Mantis Stan Yunus is a great fighter. If he fights Spence, he can't let Spence be great. You see? He can't let Spence be great. He has to be the one who's great in that ring and doing everything correct and, um, and being in, in great condition. If not, that means Earl Spence is going to be the one who's not letting Stan Yunus be great. And Earl Spence is going to, and I think Earl Spence will stop him in the sixth round. So Amantis is going to have a lot, a lot to think about if he's going to fight Spence and he wants to, to battle for Spence's three belts. Amantis is going to have to go back to the drawing board, get a nutritionist, work on his conditioning, work on being able to take that half a step back and let his hands go. And the big thing is just not stand, stand in front of uh, Spence. Stan Yunus is not a boxer. He's not Floyd Mayweather. He's not Roy Jones. He's not Terrence Crawford. He's not Keith Thurman with the lateral movement and moving around the ring. He's not that guy. He's not uh, Lomachenko. He's not any of those guys who can move around the ring, dance, and box. Sugar Ray Leonard, box of punches. He's not that guy. He's going to stand right there and let his hands go. And I think that's going to be a huge problem for him fighting Earl Spence. Unless he can catch him uh, coming in when Earl spend some time gets a, a little bit uh, anxious, trying to force situations, and that's where Stan Yunus has the power, he has the, the style to get his shots in. But that's that's easier said than done. So a huge congratulations to Stan Yunus for um, you know making his dream come true and just believing in it and giving his everything, and look what happened. And it's absolutely amazing, man. Hard work, dedication, belief in yourself and your team can get you to the big stage. And that's what it did for him. It's just a guy like Stan Yunus, whatever one he fights, he takes some shots, but he definitely lands the, the crispier, more eye-catching shots in the contest when they're in close range. And that's what that's what he was able to do to repeatedly rock Butev. And Butev is a sturdy fighter, great balance, uh, great boxing ability. Tough guy, man. But he just wasn't able to get out of the way of some of those hard right hands and jabs. And that ultimately cost him the fight. Uh, Stan Yunus has a habit of coming in with his head down. That's recipe for disaster against Earl Spence, because Earl Spence is meeting him with uppercuts. Two, three, four uppercuts, then back up top with the hook, step outside to an angle, come back with a right hand, shove you, bump you, get you off balance, let his shots go again. And that's what's going to floor Stan Yunus, and that's what's going to give him problems. Earl Spence is on your left side, right side, behind you, in front of you, up, down. I mean... His punch selection is crazy. The angles he comes in at are crazy. He just never lets you get set, never lets you get your shots off. And he's doing it to, I mean, just absolutely phenomenal fighters. And I just can't see where he's all of a sudden going to slip up and, and not be able to impose his way on Stan Yunus. But I give Stan Yunus a shot. Styles make fights. He has to make a few adjustments. But the big thing for him, I think, is to get a nutritionist and the right person to, to help him to get his cardio up because if he wants to stand a chance against Earl Spence, he's going to have to be able to fight every second of every round to give the fans something they can enjoy in an action-filled fight with him and Spence, which I think would be as long as it lasts. But right now, you got to just say Earl Spence has the recipe for success against anyone he fights. Terrence Crawford is the only one where it's like a big question mark there. Because we know Crawford has the legs, the ability, the IQ 
to, to, to blunt any opponent's offense. He sees something in Spence, Spence sees something in him. We're not the experts. I'm just a guy who's sitting back here trying to analyze this stuff from my limited uh, uh, boxing knowledge from actually boxing and then just a whole lot of just being a spectator. It's just hope to sanction the bodies, man. Don't come and get involved uh, to, to push the fight between Stan Yunus and Spence. But if, if so, I hope Stan Yunus seizes the opportunity and really does does his best to get himself in shape and prepare because it, it's hard to prepare for a guy like Earl Spence. Earl Spence is like a damn Julio Cesar Chavez in his prime, nonstop breaking you down, coming forward. That's what he is. And and, and um, it's just hard to beat somebody like that. So more to come on Stan Yunus. Congratulations to him. He's doing good. He's in a great position. But he's going to have to train and train hard if he wants to beat Spence. It is not going to be easy. WBA uh, uh, welterweight, regular welterweight champion, on his way to bigger and better things. Uh, hopefully he can get a fight with maybe Keith Thurman or someone else. They, you know, when money's involved, anything can happen. Right now he's a mandatory. Doesn't mean we're going to see him fight Spence. But let PBC get involved. He's, he's with them. Let, let them sort it out. Let them work him out. Put him in there with Keith Thurman. If not, Keith Thurman's going to wiggle his way in between to Spence and Crawford. Right now, Keith Thurman's in a good position. Fight Stan Yunus. Fight Crawford. You know, he, he's not going to go down. There should be no more lateral movements for him. But we'll see what ultimately ultimately they decide. That being said, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Shout out to all the veterans. And as always, I'm in the breeze.